Hello and welcome. My name is Angie Holden. I'm the blogger behind the Country Chic Cottage. If you've been around here any time at all and you have an Epson EcoTank printer that you've converted for sublimation, you've heard me mention that it's extremely important to print regularly to avoid clogs. Now, summertime is coming up. You might have vacations planned. How do you print every week if you are not going to be at your house? Today, I am going to show you a hack that will save you all of those clogs and headaches. So we are going to set up an email address for your printer. It is way simpler than it sounds. And then your printer will have an email address. Now your printer does have to be hooked up to your home's Wi-Fi network. It will have to be on and connected to the Wi-Fi in order for this process to work. But then once we set up the email address, we can just email from any computer or phone to the printer, email a file, and it will print out the file for you from anywhere that you may be vacationing this summer. So this is a great way to make sure that you don't come home to a clogged printer. And we're also gonna talk about using Gmail to schedule emails. So you can schedule those out for several weeks or several months if you are not gonna be home to print to your printer. So let's take a look first of all at setting up that email address. And yes, I promise it is a very easy process. So let's take a look at setting up the email address for your Epson EcoTank printer. On your printer's front panel, scroll over until you see settings and click OK. Then scroll over until you see Epson Connect Services, click OK. Then click OK on the register delete and it will ask if you want to register your printer at this point, go ahead and click proceed. It will go ahead and connect with Epson and then you'll print a registration sheet. On that registration sheet, there will be a website you can go to or a code you can scan on your phone in order to register your printer for Epson Connect. So I went to the website as indicated on the piece of paper that printed and it asked me for my authentication code. So you should type the code in here that it printed off of your printer. After you type in your code, you will need to agree to the terms and conditions. Read those, agree to them, and click next. Now you either wanna create a new Epson account or if you already have an account with them, you can click the button over here to log into your existing account. So either create a new one or log into your account. Once you do this, your printer will now have its own email address and it will display on the screen. It will also go ahead and print onto your printer. So this goes ahead and sends that email directly to your printer and prints the email address. So go ahead and head to your printer and get that print out. So I told you that was easy, right? So it's so easy and now I have an email address for my printer. So now I'm gonna use that email address to send a print to the printer. And it is just as easy as attaching the file to an email and sending it to that email address. So let's take a look at sending some of those. So now that I have that email address, I have it printed out, I can keep that print out or add it to my contacts. I would type that address in a to field and then I can attach literally anything from my computer. So we're gonna go ahead and click attach files. I am showing you how to do this in Gmail, but you can do this in any email program. So you're gonna go ahead and find what you want to print on your Epson printer and attach that file. Once that's attached, you have your email address in the to line. We're gonna go ahead and click send. We don't need any text or a subject line, so we're gonna go ahead and click okay on any error messages. It did go ahead and send to my printer. However, it does send it as a plain paper setting and I had my printer set to a premium paper mat. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay and you would only have to do this once. So I could do change setting and go ahead and click print. And now the next time I email, it will just start to print. I did go ahead and send another file to see if the printer settings would work. Now it's just starting to print. I did not have to change the print settings this time. The best part is you can schedule sends right in Gmail. So open up an email message just like before and fill in your information. Then head down to the bottom, click the arrow and click schedule send. When you click schedule send, you can schedule it for any time. So pick a date and time and schedule it. So you can schedule these out when you were going on vacation to print at regular intervals so that your printer would not clog up. 
You might want to add this email address to your contacts. In order to do that, pull up the sent email message is an easy way to do that and hover over the to field. Click that down arrow and hover over the email address that you sent the print to. And then there is a little head with a plus sign and that adds the email address to your contacts. Just click that to add the email address to your contacts. Once you add it to your contacts, you can click the pencil to edit the contact and you can change the name to something that you recognize if you would like. However, now it is in your contacts. So anytime that you go to compose a new message, you can just click on to and it will open up a list of your contacts. Click on the email address associated with your printer and that will populate into the to field. So this means you don't have to memorize that weird email address just to send a email to your printer. Now I do just wanna note here, every time you print, it does print two sheets. So it prints one sheet that tells like where it's from, like the email details, and then it prints the file that you attach to the email. So if you are going to be gone for a long time, your printer cannot refill itself with paper. So you do need to stock it up with as much paper to print two sheets every time you send a print. So if you are going to be gone for two weeks, you're gonna print twice, be sure that there are at least four sheets of paper on there, and I would probably make sure there is more than that. So let's take a look at the file it prints because I wasn't able to change the printer settings. So let's take a look at the quality we're getting from these. So I will note that I was only able to use this with regular printer settings. So I did get some lines in my print because it is set to a plain paper setting. So you might pick what you're gonna print carefully, like a design, a pattern, some kind of watercolor design might not matter as much, or you might just print something very, very simple with all the colors, just get everything flowing and just not worry about reusing it. So since the quality isn't probably what you might want for say pressing, um, you can do a few different things. You could print a small file that uses all the colors that you don't plan on using later. You could print a file, something that the lines would not matter in. So you could you know, pick some kind of crazy all over pattern design where the lines would not matter because you might get those print lines in your print. However, saving yourself the headache of the clog in my opinion, is better than saving the ink. Now you can print these, if you're not gonna use them for sublimation, you could just print them on regular printer paper. So before you leave, you could stock your printer with regular printer paper, a bunch of it, remember, two copies for every email that you're gonna to send to this printer, and then you can email that printer with the techniques that I've showed. Now, I used Gmail because number one, I could schedule the sends. I do not know if on every email program that you can schedule sends. If you cannot, Gmail is free. You can set up an account to do this with and do it just as I've shown on the screen. I cannot walk through every email program, but the rest of the steps could be done on any email program. So you could send the print from any email program. Now you can manually send these. You do not have to schedule the sends out. So you can just pick something on your phone on your computer and send it to that printer. Now, remember I noted at the beginning, the printer is gonna to have to be on, hooked up to Wi-Fi, and have plenty of paper installed. So all three of those are going to have to be true, and I would run some tests before you leave. So sending it from your computer or your phone, scheduling those sends, schedule it for you know an hour from now or something like that. Make sure it actually prints. Make sure the printer doesn't give any errors about the paper settings. Make sure you have that portion fixed before you head out on your vacation. But otherwise, I hope this saves you some headaches and those clogs Epson EcoTank printers when you return from your summer fun vacation. So if you have any questions about anything we've covered, please drop down in the comment section and ask away. If you like this video, if it helped you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, head on over to our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. We have videos just like this one every single week, and trust me, you don't want to miss any of those. So thank you all so much for joining me, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.